we're beginning a scan in standing. So you come to stand where you're comfortable. And then you begin to discern, is there more weight that's residing on one leg, one foot? And of course, you notice it, and it's not just probably in one spot. Maybe there's that sense of shifting weight. And you feel if you are standing on one foot more than the other, can you listen to the connection from that foot all the way up that leg and continue? Does one side feel longer or shorter? If you discern there's one foot that I have a predominance to reside on, is that side feeling longer or shorter? Feel in the hip joint, the knee, the ankle, the knee, the hip, into your ribs, into your shoulder. And if even one ear feels like it's a little taller, reaching towards the ceiling, is it that same side or not? And then you just shift your weight, you move around a little bit, and you come back and stand. And now, very slowly, begin to notice, without really doing much, you can let your fingers touch the side of your legs, left hand, right hand, and discern if one arm feels longer. What about those ribs on that side? What about the shoulders? What about the relationship of an ear to the tip of its same side shoulder? And now, very slowly, begin to lengthen the arm down that you discern feels a little longer than the other one. If you're not sure, it's 50-50. Just begin to lengthen the arm, slide the arm down, and then you come back in your own time. You're going to do that movement a few times, listening to how you breathe. And can the head stay in a more translational relationship? Or is your bias to roll your head? Which means you've changed a plane of action. That's it. And feel to which leg am I standing on when I lengthen this one arm down? Am I on the same side leg? Am I on the other leg? So first you discern which leg you're standing on. And then you do this movement, lengthening one arm down. Did the other arm reciprocally get a little taller, as if that shoulder is going more towards the ceiling? And now stay where you are in this, it's called side bending or lateral flexion. And now discern which leg am I standing on, the same side leg or the opposite leg. And staying where you are, just shift the weight from the leg you believe you're standing on to the other leg. That's it. Oh, by doing that, did that arm passively just get longer? Did the ribs on the side you are lengthening the arm down accordion more throughout all of the ribs into your pelvis. That's it. Good. And now come back up and see, oh, you switch your weight to both feet. And now just once for just comparison, do it naively to side bend to the other side. It's lengthening the other arm down and notice which foot do I stand on? Which leg? Once you're in that side bending position, notice the leg you're standing on and then transfer the leg, the weight to the other leg. There you go. And just discern, hmm, what's different? That's it. And you compare one side is getting longer, the ribs are fanning apart, the relationship between the shoulder and the hip is getting longer, wider apart compared to the side of the arm that is lengthening down. And slowly begin to shift your weight. You come through the neutral, how do you breathe? And shift your weight to do this lengthening of one arm down and compare, is it a habit 
which leg I go to stand on, and can you play with it? Good. And then you leave that all alone, and you lie on your back and you rest. So the rest of the lesson will be on the floor, with your body on the floor. But at the end, maybe we'll come back to that reference movement, the scan you did in standing, and this initial reference movement. And all we're discerning is, what do I automatically do when I don't just slow it down and think about it? And then if I make a comparison, does it inform me that I have a choice? And might one be a little bit more? Well, it's different. I, I'll even say a little bit more efficient. Notice your contact on the floor. You're breathing. And because this is the first time I've brought you to the floor for a scan, you just notice if you were exploring that reference movement in standing, does it have um, some, some mirroring of how you're resting now on the floor? Now, very slowly, I'm going to ask you to come onto one side. You'll roll yourself to the side. And you're going to need to start. The bottom arm is going to rest on the floor in front of you. It'll start palm face up. The top hand, I'm going to suggest, is in a push-up position. So if you feel, I need some head support, use head support. But remember, the head support at times might, might need to sort of the allowance of it to disappear, and then you can find it again. And notice if you decided to go onto your right side or your left side. And now on your side, hips and knees bent 90 degrees, that is going to be a relative constraint. I said relative because I'm asking you to feel the bend in your hips and your knees that to some degree, doesn't have to be exactly 90 degrees, but to some degree is consistent throughout this lesson. Now very slowly in this position, let's just wake up another direction, another movement. Begin to roll a little forward and a little back. Notice when I said that, how do you do it? Do you take your top elbow and glide it forward or your top hand making a hand sandwich with the bottom hand and glide it forward and back? Are you thinking of the top hip and knee resting on the bottom hip and knee? but a little bit of gliding that top hip and knee a little forward and back. And feel the contact of your ribs, the entire side of you that is resting on the floor. It's the bottom side. Make the movement small so that you can really feel you're rolling versus twisting. And listen to how you breathe. And feel the floor is giving you information, the, like a tire, where the treads of the tire receive the road to move forward or in reverse to go back. But that when you always feel the ground, you know where you are. And then you pause for a moment. Now, very slowly, imagine that I have my hands, both of you have had lessons with me, so I have my hands on your top ribs, gently, just resting. And very gently, I want to give you the sense that you could lean and hug the ribs on the floor into the floor, gently. You maybe exhale as you do that. And then you inhale as you just return to neutral. 
and you notice, is it just the same contact with the ribs on the floor when you lean and hug them into the floor? Or is there some sense of you're rolling a little bit forward or back? What do you notice? And I'm just asking you to notice versus one is correct or incorrect. Because you could make a choice. You could say, oh, I could do this movement of leaning, hugging the ribs that are already on the floor more into the floor without a sense of rolling. Or I could do it with a sense of rolling. It just means you have choice. And then you pause and rest from that a moment. Now if I said, what if my hands on top of you, I'm ready to remove them on the top ribs. I'm ready to take them away. And you're going, no, 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 don't go away. How would you continue to want the top ribs to keep in contact with my hands as I very slowly begin to lift them away so that we're never missing contact, what would you do? What would you do in your organization? And hopefully you will be breathing. Are you inhaling or exhaling? Where do you sense something feels lighter if you wanted the top ribs to go more lifting towards my hand, my imaginary hand, or in the direction of the ceiling? How would you organize yourself to do this? So maybe you begin to feel, oh, in order for the ribs on the top side to lift in the direction of the ceiling, arcing, do the bottom ribs start to de-weight themselves from the floor? Good. And, and as you explore, resting as you need to, because resting is so important that we're not doing reps and sets, you just return to it. If I said, could you compare once the sense that you want to lean and hug your ribs on the floor, whichever side you're on, into the floor, what happens to the relationship of that bottom side shoulder and hip? And then you come back to the neutral and you compare. It's the upper ribs towards the ceiling. You want to lift as if the ceiling's too far away, but they were leaning in the direction of the ceiling, lifting. And what happens to the relationship of this top shoulder and hip when the upper ribs are wanting to reach or lift towards the ceiling? You go back and forth, comparing the differences. And then when you're ready, oh, there you go. So I see a beautiful variation going on on the floor. Whatever it is that helps clarify, elucidate what you're feeling, by all means, do those things that make it clear. Excellent. These are other lessons that are wiring into you so that you can feel how you're mobilizing through what that third sphere, but it includes the pelvic bowl and your head. Let that go. Roll to your back and rest. You listen to you. That's what's most important. It's your learning. Movement. And now on your back, sometimes it's easier for some to stand your feet. Sometimes it's also easier if you interlace your hands and place them behind the fullest portion of your head, 
but you'll find what works best for you. And the elbows will rest out to the side, never force them onto the floor. We all have our own chest, shoulders, the areas where we sometimes have, we want to be, we've, we've had some injuries or we have some concerns. So you always want to be gentle. And then slowly, how would you replicate that movement when you were doing it standing and now we were doing it on one side? How would you do it on your back? How would you do this movement that one side starts to shorten? The other side is lengthening. What, what do you do with your head? Are the hands transferring, translating the head to one side? And are you exhaling when you do that? You inhale as you come through the neutral. Which side did you start with? And was that the side that you were lying on? Or was it the ceiling side? And think of your three spheres interconnected by your spine. What is the pelvic sphere and your head sphere doing? Are they doing the same thing? And therefore, what is your rib basket, the second middle sphere doing? Is it going in the opposite direction? And what about the relationship with ribs? Are some ribs accordioning together and other ribs fanning apart. And then you just let it all go, you rest. The movement in three different orientations we've explored, it's the same movement, but what's different? Well, your relationship to gravity, feedback from the floor, or some of those relationships more in the same plane of action, or it involved a little bit of rotation, rolling or turning. And now roll back to the side, the original side, or the side you feel that's the side I'm going to explore right now. Now we're going to change it up a little bit. And here is when if you, you will not have the bottom arm as a pillow to rest your head on. So you'll use head support, but be willing to relinquish head support at times. You'll understand as we progress. So make sure that that head support, if it gets slid out of the way, is fine. Now, very slowly, you'll do with your top arm whatever you feel serves you best. Remember, its movement in awareness through movement lessons. So nothing is etched in stone, or I should say locked in cement. Something can move, but the constraint of having your hips and knees maintain bend instead of straightening them is part of this lesson. But if you so choose to play with that variation and then return to this 90 degree bend, by all means. Now slowly, the bottom arm. Start with the bottom arm long in front of you, 90 degrees with your torso, palm face up. And begin to explore the floor in front of you with a long bottom arm that starts palm face up. Go very slow. The bottom arm is going to slide on the floor under your direction, your guidance. And it can slide a little down towards your knees. What do you do with the top hand if it's in a push-up position or it's resting on the arm? Can it lift at a specific moment to free that arm to slide down or to slide up? What is the availability of the bottom long arm to slide on the floor as if in front of you, there were hours of a clock. And somewhere down by your buttocks, we're going to make the six o'clock. And somewhere above your head on this big clock on your mat, on your floor, is 12 o'clock. 
So you discern where these, which hours you see in front of you and to which hours with ease and comfort this bottom long arm, palm face up, begins to slide. And then the question is, are you curious and watching the arm? And is it just the arm? Is it just the arm? Or how do you organize yourself so that if you want the arm to go lower toward your knees or higher up toward your head and you're curious to look at your arm, how does the rest of you respond in accordance with the movement of your arm that it makes it feel easier? As if it's very hot right now, so I think if I say, oh, you are on an ice skating rink, you're dressed appropriately, so you're not gonna get all wet or really cold, but the slipperiness, the lack of traction, if you were lying on ice, on an ice skating rink, how you would move this arm, what is the range for you that's available? And you play with that. Where is it for you? This is easy. The minute it's not easy and you feel compromised, well, just pause and rest. What might you need to do in those spheres, your pelvis, your ribs, your head, that would enable, allow? And if you are, for some of you, possibly finding that your long bottom arm could elongate further up, towards your head, towards your face, as if you decided, you know something, I want to sort of slide that pad underneath my head out of the way and bring my long bottom arm under my head to be the pillow to rest my head on. Do that. So you might notice, oh, my long arm actually slid the head supports out as it was coming up that I could roll my face onto it. What happened for your spine, in your pelvis, in your ribs, in your head? And you just keep sliding the arm up and down. And then after you've done that for a while, just let it go, roll to your back and rest. And you notice your contact. It's up to you if you want to explore the same movement on the other side, just to compare. Or you can come back to the regular side you started in. But I'm going to give a moment for those that are deciding, I'm going to go to the other side. So for many, I see now you're on your left side. And just begin again. Remember, we first started when we came to the side, a little bit of rolling, a little bit of rolling forward and back while the top knee rests on the bottom knee. It's just a, a gentle shifting in the pelvis, maybe in the shoulder girdle. It's a little bit of rolling. And then begin to use that other movement where the movements we did in standing 
and then I also had you do it on your back with your hands behind your head, how would you replicate it on this side? There's a name, many names of what we call this movement. It's often referred to as side bending or lateral flexion. So one side accordions together, the other side fans apart. Listen to the relationship that each side, ribs, shoulder, hip, are having in comparison to the other side. And when the floor gives you information, remember I suggested if my hand was resting, my hands were resting on your top ribs, and I was gently encouraging the bottom ribs to hug and lean into the floor. And then I was going to remove my hands and you felt, no, 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 don't go away. And you wanted to follow me. Feel what you do, how you organize in your where, on the bottom side, the top side. And then you rest on your side after you've explored those initial movements we did on the other side. Now you have another new bottom arm. Begin to explore the floor in front of you. It's the other half of the clock. Those hours were for ease, enjoyment. You're sliding this new bottom arm down and up. Down, what happens to the rest of you? Is it just the arm? Can your eyes be curious? Why am I sliding my arm down to where? How does that refer through your spine, your spheres and up? And if a standing hand is in the way, it's a movement. Could the hand slide underneath? The hand lifts gently and it glides under and the hand glides over. We're looking for a pathway of ease. I even dare say elegance instead of there's a lot of emergency breaks going on here. And feel for this other side, where is this arm with ease, willing to slide? When it's in front of you, the palm is face up. And it's possible for some that you actually get the idea that, oh, if, if I was going to transition and I wasn't going to use any head support now, and I wanted to bring this bottom long arm up as the pillow to rest my head on, when would your head know to roll on top of the arm as the arm rolls underneath the head, the face? Now you're comparing one side to the other, how you do it. And what you do with the top arm, choose. There are options here. That's it. And, and if you wanted to look at the arm, a look at the hand that is sliding down or up. What does that do for your spine? Or these, these spheres that I speak about from the pelvis to the rib basket to the head. Is there a relationship that is congruently playing out of how these three spheres are organizing themselves? Good. Now, roll to your back and rest. What's similar, what's different? And it's okay not to know. But just asking the question, we start to go, I, I wasn't even paying attention to that, or maybe you were. So now you've compared this side to that side. You've done this standing, you've done this on your right side, on your left side, and on your back. So choose which side, your right or your left, you prefer and come back onto your side for the next exploration.
it was interesting. Did I choose to go to the other side? Did I learn something that said that side feels, I don't know why, I'm going there. And now very slowly, with the long arm, the bottom arm still long, palm face up in front of you, and the arm stays on the floor, and the palm stays up. If I said, you know, sometimes we hear the trucks as they back up, we hear this beep, 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 beep. So I'm gonna ask you to take the bottom long arm and begin to bend that elbow and direct it towards you while the forearm and the hand still stay palm face up, as if you wanted to back up into your ribs. When you touch the ribs, just touch the ribs and then elongate that bottom arm forward again as a long arm. And just feel how you do that. And then once you start to feel it's, it's not jerky, there's no emergency break, how I am backing up this long bottom arm by bending the elbow, but the forearm and hand are still on the floor. It's sliding towards my ribs. When it comes to your ribs, and I said, well, what if you wanted to slide that elbow a little bit underneath your side? What would you do? What would you do with the top hand? What would you do with your bottom hip, shoulder, temple of the head, on the floor, bottom side, knee, leg? Where would you support yourself so that you could begin to create a little bit of a bridge that you could, without forcing, your bottom elbow now bent, backing up in reverse, could move underneath the ribs, and then you slide it forward again. That's it, that's it. And for each one of you, you begin to discern how far you can create that wonderful bridge. You know how I love to share rainbows. What's happening to the top side of you towards the ceiling? Might that be the shape of the upper portion of a rainbow? What's happening to the bottom side is it's lifting away from the floor so that elbow can slide underneath. Is it the bottom arcing of the rainbow? And begin to explore sliding this arm. Once the elbow bends, it backs up towards your ribs. You give it the allowance, the clearance to slide underneath. You're just going to slide that elbow as far back if it can go back behind your back and you slide it through again. You're just becoming a little bit more accomplished without striving to do anything. You just, how do you slide it under you towards the back and then forward again? I always love to speak about if this is a violin bow and the floor now becomes the violin strings you're playing the strings. Now let's do this. Yep. If it's not so simple, you can always come to stand. Now the arm that you would be exploring is going to be in front of you like a long arm and then you back up the arm if you want to do it in standing. What would you do to slide that arm through to turn and come back behind you? You just keep playing at your own pace. That's it. And the minute you feel effort or weight or you have to work really hard, just reverse it. That's it. And then feel you might be able to even get that arm through so that that arm is back behind you. Did you roll a little forward? That's it. Beautiful. And then you just keep sliding that arm from the behind the elbow has to bend back so that the forearm and hand, now it's the fingertips that are going to come through the ribs. What do you have to do? Is there also a little bit of rolling? That's it. 
Listen to how you breathe. That's it. And just get familiar with that movement. That's it. And feel how the rest of you helps when those ribs are going to lift away from the floor to make a little tunnel so that your bottom arm can slide underneath. Do you roll? When is it that you roll a little forward? When is it you roll a little back? And then you lift. That's it. So we've got a little bit of rolling going, lifting, wherever you are in your exploration. Go rest. We'll come back. Go rest. Notice your contact. Now this time, come onto your side, but I'm gonna have you use your bottom arm long as a pillow to rest your head on. So when you're ready, you might have discerned I'm gonna change sides, it's okay. So now you have your bottom arm long, and maybe, maybe I would suggest start with the top arm hand in a push-up position in front of your chest that it's weight-bearing. Now very slowly, you will have to do two separate things at the same time. If I said very, very slowly, slide your head off of the bottom arm, off of the bottom arm that's the pillow for your head and slide your face, your cheek, on the floor in front of the bottom arm. So the arm is a little back behind your head, your face, your head is a little in front of the bottom arm, and then maybe you inhale and you put your head back on top of the arm. You slide the arm a little to meet the head and the head to meet the arm. And just start to play with that movement. You take your face Forward. Maybe there's a little bit of a rolling your face a little to the floor and you allow that bottom long arm that was the pillow to just slide back a bit. And then you bring your head and your arm back together. Now, as you do that, if you begin to discern that there's a little bit of rotation in this bottom arm as your head comes forward, of the arm, does the palm of your hand start to reorient itself a little bit? Because it's a micro movement of the arm going back behind the head. And then you come back, the head is resting on the long arm, and now I'm going to say, oh, change the direction. Begin to slide the back of your head behind that long arm, maybe the long bottom arm slides a little forward, and then reverse, bring the arm and the head back together. You move the head, you move the arm away from each other, one goes back, the other one goes forward, then they both join each other, meeting in the middle. How do you breathe? You could inhale, you could exhale. Just play with how you choose to breathe. And if you are lifting the head a little bit to meet the arm, what do you do in your ribs? What do you do on the floor side that makes the head light? And then begin in this small range to alternate. Once the head comes forward, that long bottom arm slides a little back. Then you rejoin the head and the arm. Then you exhale.
just take your head back. It's sort of like this little pecking movement. You slide that arm a little forward. You just, a very small range. You separate head and arm, you come together. And then you reverse the separating of the arm and the head, and they come together so that you're getting familiar. And what's happening on the floor side? What's happening on the ceiling side? And might there be a little bit of rolling happening? And then the next time you bring the arm forward and the head goes to the floor behind, slide the top arm, I'm sorry, the bottom arm down to be in front of you. And then maybe a little further down towards your knees. And then slide the bottom arm up to its 90 degree beginning place and then above to become the arm that is going to be the pillow underneath your head and then slide the head a little in front of the arm just to take that bottom arm a little bit back and play that range and if you begin to discern where your range is easy and comfortable, there's a rotation of your arm. And if there's a rotation, listen in the shoulder, listen in the ribs, listen in the forearm and the hand, they might rotate and turn slowly, incrementally. And play with that. Is there a little rolling going on here? It's not just a rolling lesson, it's a lot more than that, but it involves. That's it, beautiful. Good, lie on your back and rest. Oh, which way did you sweep your arm when your intention from this exploration was to let go of it and lie on your back and rest? What did you choose to do? Many variations happening, all wonderful. Notice your contact. Now, come back to the movement on your side. Again, if you're switching sides, that's fine. But come to a side. And let's go back to the movement in the beginning. Top arm is in a push-up position. Bottom arm long in front of you, palm face up. And begin to back up your elbow to slide it underneath the ribs gently. Create a bridge. And then as you take the elbow back, it's still bent. Can you begin to really lace the whole forearm, hand, fingers through the gap? through the bridge so that that arm would be back behind you. Find slowly how to organize. Imagine it. And not in one go, in many explorations, you're just revisiting one of the earlier movements we did. Is it possible? Oh, and, and if you roll a little forward, does that help? And if you feel, I'm going to do something with the top leg that makes it clearer for me, well, by all means. But keep the bottom leg, the bottom knee, Leaning into the floor, it'll help. And if you, you have, if you have found an easy way to back up the bottom elbow, slide that elbow underneath the bottom ribs, the forearm, even the hand, the fingers, they come through to the back, and you're a little bit rolled forward, would you want to begin to rotate the arm palm face down and circle it up around you, 
Do you roll more towards the floor in front of you? That's it. And only go where it feels easy. The minute you feel it's compromising you, if you roll to your belly, okay, but make sure you come back on your side. Okay, good. Just keep playing with it incrementally. Yes, good. Someone just found their way to roll to their back, lacing that hand through the back of the ribs, forward, you rolled a little back, roll to your back and rest. Now, slowly organize yourself to roll to one side and come up to stand. Now you're not going to have gravity pressing you into the floor. Just come and stand. Have your legs comfortably spread hip shoulder width apart. And go back to that initial movement we did where you're going to lengthen one arm down, down in the direction of your thigh. And you feel, ah, which leg do I stand on that facilitates more of that gap or bridge or the underneath side of a rainbow where the other ribs, the other side gets long. And then bring that arm that is sliding down your leg where you are shortening that side and you're leaning your weight to the other long axis leg. Bring that arm forward in front of you. And then bend the elbow and lace that arm underneath or along the side of the ribs that are now more accordion together. And take that elbow back behind you let the forearm and the hand, you still stay in this side bent position so that you can lace that arm back behind you and then lace it to the front again. And feel, do you rotate yourself? Do you rotate yourself a little, turning a little to make it easier? And then when you've laced that arm, the elbow first through the gap on your side in the vertical, but you could imagine I'm lying on my side. Difference would be in how you're bending in your hips and knees, but you're standing now. Once you get that arm back behind you, how would you begin to organize that arm to make an arm circle and come up as if it was going to be the arm the long arm that your head rested on. And then let that arm come forward in front of you, like a windmill. And then when the arm comes forward, bend the elbow, slide it in between the gap of your ribs on the side you have originally lengthened that arm, and do the arm circles this way. And feel what you do, where you shift weight, where your head, your eyes go. And you could do one side and then transfer the weight to the other and then do the other arm in this arm circle. You could also reverse the circle. How do you organize now that you're not on the floor. You are, you're standing on the floor, but you don't have your whole side on the floor. And if you were any kid that was making arm circles, one and then the other, or if you're a swimmer and you were doing freestyle or backstroke, it's a little different, but if you are a swimmer and you do freestyle or backstroke, when is it that the elbow bends? The elbow bends and lifts so that you could breathe under your arm. If you're 
not doing the backstroke. If you're doing the backstroke, you've got your head out of water. Can you see a resemblance? Good. Leave that alone. Have a little walk. Notice what you notice.